Uh, good morning, guys. Uh, this morning is just a quick reply to somebody that was looking for some uh, advice uh, on a VFD and, uh, and running two motors off of a single VFD. And I'm just going to draw it for you uh, real quick and uh, show you how I intend to do this. Uh, they're dissimilar motors. Uh, they're both three phase. Um, they're both going to be wired low volts, which is 240 volt. But I've only got single phase here at my shop. And uh, we're going to do it with uh, <clears throat> an AC Tech, uh, the SM Vector Control. So that's the, uh, uh, that's the book on that. And we're going to refer to this in, in a couple of places uh, as I go through this uh, little video series. I, I don't know if I'm going to try to pack this all into one or uh, what we're going to do. But first of all, let's draw all the components. And then I'm going to show you uh, power wiring. And then we'll move to control wiring. And then after that, we're going to move to programming. And it sounds really complicated. And when you read these books, see, the thing about freak drives and, and uh, what's, they're capable of so much. But quite often, all you need them to do is one thing or two things. And when you read the book, it's just a mind melt. And you look at it and go, oh, wow, there's networking on this thing, and there's USB ports, and I have to flash program the EEPROM, and I have to do this, and I have to do that, but you don't. You you know, depending on your needs, you have to say, well, I only needed to do this and this, and you need to be able to go to the book and find just the things you wanted to do. So um, initially, we're going to have um, your VFD, and then we're going to have our two motors. And in the case of my grinder, I have a, uh, a 0.5 and a 1.0. So these are three phase, so these have their three phase inputs. So we've got these components. Um, we also have a small oiler. Uh, which is a Bijour uh, clock type oiler. Uh, I've already identified it. It is a 220 volt and it has two phases. Uh, our other components are going to be these um, overload blocks. And what this, what this is is a motor protection device. Uh, three phases in, three phases out. But here you've got uh, switch gear. Uh, you've got a normally closed side and a normally open side. Um, that's the trip position. If this, uh, if this overload block, it's adjustable right here. If this motor trips, it's going to either open switches or close switches. And we're going to wire these to the normally closed. And when I say normally, when this thing is in the run position and the three phases going through are closed, the switch gear is also closed, the auxiliary switch gear. And this is just pilot duty. And we're going to get to the pilot of that later. So uh, we have two of these. There's going to be one for each uh, uh, one for each motor to protect the motors individually. All right. So we're going to draw these on the drawing. And those are considered motor protection overload blocks. We're just going to call them overloads. And I'm just going to put OL on there. And those are three in and three out. All right. And then our VFD is two in because we're going to be, uh, if you need help selecting your VFD, you need to pick one that is of the proper voltage and of the proper output rating. Uh, in this case, uh, you just uh, combine your uh, two horsepowers. You got one horse and a 0.5. So you would need at the minimum a, a one and a half horse drive. If you want to oversize it a little bit, <clears throat> some of the uh, some of the VFD companies uh, derate their VFDs. If you're going to use them on a single phase input, um, you would need to uh, uh, select a, a derated one which means you'd have to buy an oversized one. They may uh, suggest you get a two horse or even a three horse unit. Um, AC Tech and Lens uh, already has a D rating in there. 
So uh, for this application, I would buy exactly a one and a half horse drive. But if you choose any other brand, uh, you need to consult that manufacturer. Uh, so anyways, we're, we're two phases in, three phases out. And we're going to call this drawing power wiring. Okay, we're not doing any control wiring on here at all. Um, you bring in your power supply here. So this is 220 volt, two phase in. It's here. And then the VFD generates the third phase. But what we're going to do is we're going to come down to this overload block. And this overload block. And we're going to come down to this overload block. And we're going to come down to this overload block. And we're going to come down to this overload block. And we're going to come over to this overload block. Um, out of there, it's, it's simple. Three in, three out. Three in, three out. So your motors get wired like that. Now, we've protected each motor for overload. But all that's going to happen is the VFD doesn't know that overload sitting there and that overload sitting there. And uh, we lose a motor here or we overheat a motor here. The VFD doesn't know that. All it knows is, it, is its output right here at these three lines. So if we trip here and this motor goes into fault, the VFD doesn't know that. Because all it's running now is one motor, and it doesn't know to shut down, and it doesn't know a, a, a fault condition exists. Um, so we're going to use this auxiliary switch gear on the overloads to uh, send a feedback signal to the VFD to shut it down. And I'm going to show you how to do that on another drawing, because this, this is considered control wiring here and here. Um, and also your oiler, we're going to name this oil. Uh, your oiler is going to get wired into a control circuit as well. So, uh, anyways, this is the power wiring. And I'm going to draw all these components again on another piece of paper. And uh, we're going to name that one control. But these are all your uh, load carrying uh, wiring. All right, so let me uh, switch papers. And get the paper off of there where everything bled through with my Sharpie. Okay. <clears throat> and we're going to go again, draw all this stuff uh, one more time. And we're going to call this one Control. And we've got a VFD. And we've got an overload block. And we've got an overload block. And we've got a motor. And that's a 1.0. And we've got a 0.5. And then we've got our oiler. And that's two phases in. Now this is simply control. Now what we're going to do is we're going to use the programmable switch gear. And you need to bear with me a second while I find it here in the book. Ramble switch gears on 16 and 17 on the terminal strip. And you, we can make this switch gear do whatever we want it to do via the programming. What we're going to do is we're going to close this switch when the VFD is given a run command. And this switch gear is going to operate um, the oiler. So what we're, what we're going to do is we're going to come off of, remember we got our 220 volt in here, two phase, and we're going to come off of one of these legs, and we're going to come over and we're going to put a small fuse. This could be a, maybe a 5 amp fuse. And then we're going to come down to uh, terminal 17. And we're going to put one leg of uh, uh, of the 220 to this. Off the other one, we're going to come out 
and go to our oiler. So now when the VFD is given a run command, this switch closes and we power up the oiler. The oiler is intended to run whenever the main spindle is running. Um, off the other line, we need to power up this other terminal and that can just go direct. So you'd come out here to a second fuse, also 5 amp, and power up your oiler. So now, <clears throat> when uh, 16 and 17, when that switch closes, when the VFD is given a run command, our oiler is running. All right, so that takes care of our oiler and that switch gear. Next up is we're, we've got terminals for normally open and normally closed. And I don't have my glasses. I'm trying to read which ones. Oh, sorry, guys. My uh, my my camera shut off. I ran out of memory. I had to blow some a few things out. Um, anyways, where was I? The oiler, uh, five amp fuses, one leg run directly, the other leg run through the switch gear and over to the oiler. Uh, we'll get into the programming later on how to make 16 and 17 uh, do what we want it to do. Uh, in, when, it, when the VFD is in default and you first fire it up, uh, that switch gear doesn't do anything. It just sits there and stays open. So you have to tell it to close up during, with it, during a run command. The last thing is uh, uh, applying a run command to the VFD. That's off of terminal uh, 1 and 4. And what you're going to want to do is come out of 4, go out to a control switch. This is going to be a user interface type control switch. It could be a simple toggle switch. It could be a like a rotary switch or whatever you want the operator to, uh, um, to use to turn the machine off and on. Uh, anyways, uh, control switch there. Uh, maintain contact um, and then come down and you want to go through your uh, auxiliaries on your overload blocks and these are uh, again these are these small terminals here and here uh, it's got a normally open side and a normally closed side but we want the normally closed so when this thing trips that switch opens and these are just pilot duty you're not running any big power through there um, <clears throat> the control voltage of the the VFD generates its own control voltage, which I think is 10 volts. It's, it's not a lot. Um, anyways, uh, user interface control switch down through this normally closed switch, down through the next normally closed switch, and then back to the VFD. So the criteria for the VFD to be given a run command is this switch closed and both of these switches closed. So if either one of these trip, it's the same thing as, as removing the run command. Or if this switch is open and these are both sitting there closed, it's, it's waiting to run. Just waiting for someone to walk up and close that switch, and she runs. And you'll notice on this drawing, uh, I haven't done any power wiring. You know, I, I showed the motors, but I don't have the three phases in and the three phases out. It would just complicate this. And that's why I separated it. I'll let you take a good look at the control. I'm going to kind of pause here. And you can pause the video and, and take a good look at it. And then I'll do the power wiring. And I'll kind of pause here if you, if you want to pause the video and take a good look at it. Um, but that's how I intend to run dissimilar motors um, off, of a, off of a VFD. Uh, I'm not using any speed control, no speed reference. The only thing I'm using the VFD to do is generate the third phase. And um, this may look overcomplicated to you, but changing out the motors... Uh, isn't really an option the, on the uh, on the Boyer Schultz. The uh, the spindle motor is an odd duck, and it would be very difficult to get it in single phase. And uh, for three hundred dollars, I can get a VFD. Um, these little guys are uh, about twenty two dollars each. No big deal. And a couple of fuse blocks and fuse holders. Um, now I don't know, maybe another twenty or twenty five dollars for for a, for a two pole uh, fuse block with uh, fuses. And I'm just talking the miniature ones, very small. All right. And uh, I'm not showing any other protection devices or anything from here on out, whether it be a breaker or a fuse disconnect or whatever. But you need to protect your VFD and the entire system. So uh, you need to do some primary fusing on the way in or some type of breaker or something. So uh, I'm not showing any of that. The motors, um, typically overload blocks are... For running protection, this little yellow dial, it, you turn it based on your amperage draw of that particular motor. 
this one is capable of being adjusted from 2.5 to 4 amps. Um, this one is capable of being adjusted from 4 amps to 6.3 amps. So this, this one goes on my one horse, and then this little guy goes on the, on the little half horse. So those, those are the overload systems. Um, but not high dollar. They need to be mounted in a, in a cabinet because it's all open wiring. Uh, you can mount them on a DIN rail, which is the small aluminum channel. They just click, and they just snap on there. So uh, you could do that, and you can also get fuse blocks uh, that mount on a DIN rail. So you could have your your two overloads and your your DIN rail uh, mounted in a Hoffman box or something with a couple of small fuses next to it. So you can keep it all very neat. Um, these don't run hot, so you don't have to worry about venting the enclosure. Uh, the VFD is the only thing that has a heat sink and uh, has uh, uh, cooling requirements. So the VFD uh, would need to be out in the open, but, but protect it from grinder dust. Put it down inside the cabinet or somewhere out of the way where it's not going to pick up a bunch of grinding dust. Um, they are enclosed on the top. There's no chance of anything getting in the top of them, but they are vented on the sides. So uh, there's that. All right. Thanks for watching. Uh, I'll shoot some more. Uh, we still need to go through the programming, and we need to go through the installation. I guess for the installation first, and then the programming last. But uh, when I do get around to uh, getting my freak drive and getting it installed and set up, uh, I need to go through that with you. But uh, I hope this maybe helps and gets you get you started on it. All right, guys. Thanks for watching.